a very good evening participants thank you so much for joining in we shall be starting at 7 pm a quick uh, update is that in case if you'd like to ask any questions to the guest speaker requesting you to kindly put your questions in the q and a box we shall then uh, pick the relevant questions and she'll take it forward a very good evening participants
Good evening, participants. I hope all of you are doing well. Please note, if you have any question for the guest speaker, please use the Q&A box for the same. And the same uh, will be addressed towards the end in case the questions are relevant to the topic of discussion. Thank you so much. We hope you have a great learning experience. Thank you once again for joining in. Hello.
A very good evening to all our participants today. We welcome you to the session with Dr. Philip Kotler, brought to you by AMC Institutions Bangalore. We have just received a message from Dr. Kotler. He'll be joining us within the next nine to 12 minutes. I request all of you to be patient and we look forward to the session. Please stay online. Greetings all the participants. We are scheduled to begin at 7 p.m. India time. We have just received a message from Dr. Kotler. He'll be joining us in seven to nine minutes. Please stay with us. Thank you for your patience. For all the participants who have joined us recently, please stay with us. Dr. Kotler will be joining us in five to seven minutes. Thank you for your patience.
A very good evening to all the participants. Thank you for joining us this evening for the session with Dr. Philip Kotler, organized by AMC Institutions Bangalore. Dr. Kotler will be joining us in four to six minutes. I request all of you to stay on, stay with us, and we will start the webinar in a few minutes. Thank you for your patience and understanding. And for the audience who are with us, the, you can send in your questions to us in the Q&A box. And during the Q&A session, we will put them forward to Dr. Kotler. See you all shortly. A very good evening to all the participants. Our Zoom is a full house. We are now live on YouTube. You can, for all your friends, uh, they can search AMC Education on YouTube and join the YouTube page of AMC Institutions Bangalore. That's AMC Education. A very good evening to all our participants. We will be starting shortly. We've just received a message from Dr. Kotler. He'll be joining us in three to five minutes. Thank you for your patience. Please stay with us.
A very good evening again, all our participants. We will be beginning in the next two to four minutes. Dr. Philip Kotler, seven views of how marketing and businesses are evolving. Today brought to you by AMC Institutions Bangalore. Please stay tuned. All our participants on Zoom request you to please share your questions on the Q&A box. This will enable us to put forward your questions to Dr. Philip Kotler. Again, welcome you all to this webinar by AMC Institutions Bangalore on seven views of how marketing and businesses are evolving by the father of marketing, Dr. Philip Kotler himself. Please stay tuned. Thank you for your patience. Again, a very good evening to our participants on Zoom and YouTube. We will be starting in a few minutes. This evening's webinar is brought to us by AMC Institutions Bangalore. The topic for this evening, as you know, is seven views of how marketing and businesses are evolving. Please stay with us, an unconditional apology for the delay. We thank you for your patience. More soon. Good evening, we have a few messages pouring in. Yes, the Zoom house is full. Please requesting others to join on YouTube in case you have your friends, family, colleagues, and friends. They could join us live on the YouTube page of AMC Institutions on Bangalore. Search for AMC Education and it pops up first. Please share this with your friends.
Good evening, everybody. We have a few queries on the AMC YouTube page. Uh, yes, you can put in your questions on the YouTube page. Our moderators will coordinate. And if it is selected, we'll put that forward to Dr. Philip Kotler. So participants can feel free to share your questions on the Zoom Q&A and or on the YouTube page with your questions. Thank you for your patience again. We will begin shortly. Good evening, everybody. For all those who have joined us on YouTube, we will be beginning shortly. We are waiting for our chief guest, Dr. Philip Kotler, who should be with us shortly. We were scheduled to start at 7 p.m. India time. Unconditional apology. There has been a slight delay, but yes, we will begin shortly. Really, thank you for your patience. Please stay with us. Very good evening, participants. We have Dr. Philip Kotler with us right here, requesting Professor Rahul to take this forward. Greetings, everybody. From India, Namaskar, Dr. Philip Kotler. Very good morning to you. Good morning. So, good morning. It's a pleasure and joy to have you with us today. Thank you. Uh, participants, uh, welcome. Welcome all the participants. I hope all of you and your friends are keeping safe during these sensitive times of COVID around the world. And uh, we hope uh, all of you stay safe, well, and all your family and friends. So learning during the lockdown today, we have with us Dr. Philip Kotler, the father, the guru of marketing. And I'm very happy to share with all of you 
that he will be speaking with us on the topic seven views of how marketing and businesses are evolving. We have registrations from over 70 plus colleges and institutions from India. We have registrations from about 25 countries, especially the neighboring countries from around India and various industries with us this evening from hospitality, IT, agri, consulting, marketing, etc. So we have close to 15,700 registrations today for Dr. Philip Kotler's webinar. And we welcome you all again to this webinar hosted by AMC Institutions Bangalore with Dr. Philip Kotler himself. So now I request AMC Institutions Bangalore Executive Vice President, Sri Rahul Kalluri, to please introduce AMC to all our participants today. Over to you, Rahul. Uh, Rohit, uh, we're waiting to hear from you, and then I will speak. Sure, sir. Sure. Just, just, just uh, uh, in about two or three minutes from now, and then uh, we'll just uh, get started. In the meanwhile, I'll also, help you, I'll also help you set up with your PowerPoint. Uh, Good. Right. And, and thanks for all your help. You've been a wonderfully corresponding uh, person to keep me in the clear about what to do when. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. So much. I think, uh, it is it is definitely uh, a fanboy moment for me and a dream come true to be hosting you here today, sir. I have been reading about you throughout my student life, and today it is definitely a dream come true to be hosting this webinar live with you. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I'm <laughs> looking at share the screen and trying to put on my PowerPoint slides. Do you? It says that it's uh, the host disabled. It. Yes. So uh, I'm just going to give you access now. Uh, before that, requesting our uh, executive vice president, if you uh, can hear us, requesting you to kindly just give us a brief of AMC. Uh, to give you a, a what? Uh, a brief of AMC. We're just waiting for the executive vice president to just join us. Oh, he is here. With us. All right. Okay. Great. Yes, Rahul. Hello, executive vice president. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Kurtlisa. So good evening to one and all. Uh, although we are doing this virtually, it is an absolute pleasure to be in the presence of Dr. Philip Kotler. You know, I'm not a management student, and yet, like many others, I have grown up listening to and reading Dr. Kotler's immense contribution to the field of management studies and marketing. At AMC, we are incredibly grateful to you, sir, for accepting our invitation and conducting this webinar. To give you a brief about AMC institutions, it was established in 1983 as Administrative Management College by our founder chairman, Dr. K. R. Paramahamsa. We started off by collaborating with the Californian University in the USA, becoming one of India's first institutions to jointly grant courses with a foreign university. In 1994, AMC became the first private institution to Karna in Karnataka to offer an MBA postgraduate degree. With a vision to be a leader in providing value-based technical education and research for the betterment of society, AMC Group provides holistic education in the spheres of management, engineering, science, technology, tourism, culinary arts, and research by unleashing the potential of future professionals and shaping them into effective, socially conscious leaders. During the last 25 years, it has imparted its students an intellectual and social experience that is unique in itself. Under the leadership of our chairman, we also have a sister organization known as City Group, comprising of City College Jainagar and City Engineering College. At AMC, we strive to bridge the brightest students, academia and industries to nurture India's future leaders. Lastly, I look forward to Dr. Kotler's words of wisdom, and I can't wait to see what's in store. Over to you, Professor Robert. Thank you uh, so much, EVP. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a glad welcome we bring to you this evening, filled with desires, hopes, and dreams we all share. The presence of such a great personality is truly a blessing. I'm sure all of us will have a lot to take back from this webinar today. Since writing his first book in 1967, Dr. Philip Kotler has gone on to become one of the foremost voices on marketing strategy and five decades. Later, he is 
on and is still candid as ever. Dr. Kotler's marketing management is the single most important marketing textbook that has ever been written, selling over 3 million copies in 20 languages. He's widely acknowledged as the father of marketing and with over 80 books to his name, it's not too hard to understand why he is such an authority. While much has been changed since his first book was published in 1967, he still believes there are certain guiding principles that are just as significant today as they were five decades ago. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have stars in the sky and one right here before us. We are honored to welcome one of the brightest stars the marketing world has seen so far. A long, long, long pending desire has been fulfilled today with the presence of Dr. Kotler. Fellow members, please join me in giving our guests the most cordial of welcomes. Over to you, Dr. Kotler. Rohit, thank you so much. I couldn't have uh, written a better introduction. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't write it, so thank you. Um, and I hope you're free to travel with me. Good <laughs> luck. <laughs> okay, uh, let me explain uh, how I ended up uh, with this particular topic of seven books. Um, from 2015, I began to think more broadly about issues about society and uh, not just business, but business and society, the common good, and, I, and capitalism, many, many things that we, we always think uh, pretty narrowly about our function, mine being I'm an economist, highly interested in the marketing world, but I think we have to broaden our perspective. So I have written since 2015, uh, I have published seven books, and I think each one will bring you into the, the, the uh, flowing waters of marketing. So I want to start with uh, the first uh, book. And uh, here is the cover. And uh, this was published recently in Japan. And the gentleman you see on the cover is the chief operating officer, the CEO of the company called Fuji Film. Remember, you would be buying film of two, one of two brands. You would either buy the Kodak film for your camera or you'd buy Fuji Film. Fuji, with Kodak was in yellow and you remember that Fuji was a green kind of box. And both of those companies have, uh, should have disappeared. Why? Because the smartphone has a camera in it. Who needs a separate camera? Uh, well, of course, when the, the smartphone first appeared, it didn't make a very good picture. And so these two companies didn't worry very much about it. As a matter of fact, Kodak had a patent on, on a smartphone. They didn't want to introduce it because they were making lots of money selling film. Uh, but, but you know, Every innovation gets better if it survives. And uh, you get quite excellent pictures now with the smartphone camera. And so those two companies knew they were on a, uh, uh, on a death warrant, on a death warrant. And Kodak died. Fuji Film did not die. Fuji Film is alive and well. How do you survive when you lose your whole market? Fascinating question. And it turns out that this gentleman, Mr. Komari, CEO Komari, is brilliant. And by the way, both of us are students of Peter Drucker. And both of us represent the two functions that we say corporations need and the others are cost functions. Every company needs marketing, and that's why I'm on the cover, and every company needs innovation, and that's why uh, CEO Kamari is there. So the book is the story of what CEO Kamari did to save Fujifilm, 
And he always felt that there were a lot of treasures in the making of film that he could never exploit because he was busy just making money selling camera uh, film. Uh, in fact, uh, if you just consider what it takes to make color film, there are 14 steps to make film in color. And each one was the solution to a problem of some kind. So Kamari knew that there were treasures in the patent system that was owned by Fujifilm. And he immediately told his thousands of workers, you could leave if you want, but you're, you'd be leaving a company that will be bigger than we are. And so the story I tell in that book is how he motivated everyone to think about a shining future made up of never stop marketing, never stop innovating. In fact, the title is, is Never Stop Winning Through Innovation. And, but remember, innovation is not enough. You could have a brand new product and it could fail. You have to make really good products and you've got to have great marketing to brand them and to make them work. So that's the first book. And I just wanted to say that it, it's a treasure of ideas about Peter Drucker's idea that the two functions that matter in a company are being great at marketing and innovation, the rest are costs. You may remember that Drucker said finance, you need it, you need production and so on, but remember uh, without marketing and innovation, where, where are you? Let me move on to the second book, Branding. You know, some people act as if they're, there's, Two things, there's marketing and there's branding and branding is more important, but that's backwards. Branding is one of marketing's big functions. Uh, if you don't, if you haven't created any product, you, you have no brand. Branding is, is a powerful idea that is done within marketing, but marketing chooses the things to make an offer to a market that's hungry for those products. So, my, there's at least 3,000 books on branding. Maybe I'm exaggerating. And every one of them is good. Everyone is likely to stimulate some thinking. Uh, so what are we trying to achieve by brand activism from purpose to action? And this goes back to, to explain th what the book is trying to do. You know, there's a big conflict now between two types of capitalism. One is called shareholder capitalism, and the other is called stakeholder capitalism. Uh, is the purpose of the firm to make profits for the shareholders who contributed the money to start and run the firm? Or is the purpose to reward all the players who make the firm successful, particularly the employees, who I believe should be treated as well as your customers? In fact, the worst thing to have are employees who don't care about your firm. You get nowhere. So, and that's one very big stakeholder. Uh, but if you look at Unilever and its wonderful CEO for eight for 10 years before he retired, Mr. Paul Polson, he distinguished seven different stakeholders. Normally you say it's uh, the stakeholders are the customers, the employees, some suppliers, maybe some distributors, et cetera. He, and you know, he ranked them. He put the customers and employees in the one and two ranks. Who did he put in seven? He put in seven, the shareholders. In other words, the least important group to be thinking about when you're trying to reward all the players in your firm are the shareholders. However, by doing that, the shareholders will earn more money than if the company was only driven for the purpose of rewarding shareholders. You understand the difference? We have a lot of examples where of companies that like Ben and Jerry's, uh, uh, Starbucks, where they're trying to reward the stakeholders. 
And as a result, the shareholders make a lot of money. But if you only ran it for just the shareholders by paying the lowest wages to your employees, searching for the cheapest suppliers, you're not going to be around very long. So getting back to brand activism, we also believe in another principle that a company should reveal its values, what it cares about, because your company, your customers know a lot about you anyways. Today in the age of, in the digital revolution, we can look up anything we want about any company and what they care about, what they're making. So a lot of customers want to know, should I buy from this company or that company? What, what, what are the, what's the company about that what is General Motors about? What is uh, Hyundai, Honda, Hyundai? What are their values? I know my values. I want to sort of buy from companies that share my values. So the question about branding is, what is your purpose as a brand? Uh, if you make food, is it possible that you make, you want to make healthy food? If, if you're McDonald's, are you making healthy food? Why don't you tell us what you believe you're accomplishing and who this is for when you start uh, your brand? So branding should be stronger if it also reveals uh, what you're all about as a company. You can read more about that. And we, we in, throughout the book, we show so many things, tangible episodes uh, and companies and what they've been doing. The third book, is marketing 5.0. Now, actually, we can distinguish between five levels, 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, and 5.0. And uh, I'll tell you, there is no book called 1.0. There's no book called 2.0, but I did write one with some co-authors called 3.0, and then cast backwards and said, had I written an earlier book, it would have been called 1.0. And the other one would have been called 2.0. And what it is is this. 1.0 is, is what marketing originally was. It was a very functional subject. It dealt, it had salespeople and ads and so on. And everyone knows what, how, what the shape of marketing before the digital revolution. And then we recognized the importance of emotion. We didn't know that during 1.0. 1.0 was very straightforward. Here's the product, here's a description, here's the price, here's where you get it. All right, that's 1.0. 2.0 realizes that there's a relationship we want with our customers. Uh, we want empathy with our customers and understand them. So we, my premise is that about 70% of our decision-making as consumers is emotional. We may deny that, because we can give reasons why we chose that car. Often the reason given is a rationalization of our emotional choice, basically. But it's not only customers who are emotional, producers are emotional. I mean, people who make products. Uh, look at the, the CEO of Boeing, at Boeing, the airline. The, the CEO basically his emotions must be operating because it's a big risk to make a big decision to invest billions of dollars on an airplane and so on. And there's an emotional content to businesses making decisions. So we have to, uh, that's 2.0 thinking. Now 3.0 was the name of uh, the, three, the third stage and I would describe it as well-being marketing. And so in the book 3.0, and there is a book called 3.0, it talks about 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0 is marketing about how do we really make good products and improve lives? Okay. Now, then we wrote marketing 4.0, and, and as a way of background, here's the problem. Marketing keeps changing every year. New things, new strategies, new tools. And as a result, we should rewrite our textbook. 
every year, but no textbook of 700 or 800 pages can be done every year. As a matter of fact, uh, it takes four or five years to do a, an excellent textbook. So we do, we, we decide management needs something to read to bring them up to date on what happened during the last few years. For example, we published Marketing 4.0 in 2017, and it had a lot to say, it was very popular. In fact, uh, in terms of 4.0, we, we talked about the youth, women, netizens, and uh, new ways to understand how buying takes place. Buying takes place because you create awareness, then you create an appeal, your product is appealing, then the consumer goes through the third stage and asks questions of you, and then if they like the answers, they buy, and then if they really enjoy the product, they buy again, and they maybe hopefully become advocates of the firm. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is that in 4.0, we did a lot, we built a new model. Uh, and one of the things about the model was um, we taught, uh, talked a lot about customer journeys, customer journeys. Uh, imagine a, um, a, a sales, uh, a, a, imagine a uh, place that sells Hon Honda cars. Uh, uh, and a customer comes in. What I'd like to do sooner or later with that customer say, how did you get to us? What, what basically got you started wanting a car? And, and then what did you look at on your way to making a decision? What were the touch points? Did you see an ad? Did you hear about us? Were there several brands you were considering? How did you end up with us? That's the customer journey. And we're making the big point in 5.0 and then 4.02. Map the customer journeys and the touch points and be excellent at all the touch points. If your salesperson who is first seen by that person who walked into your, uh, your, your place, it turns off the customer by being too pushy, that touch point was mismanaged and the customer leaves and he doesn't buy your car. So now, what else did we do in Marketing 5.0? We wanted to call it the book that deals with, this is the subtitle, Marketing Technology for Humanity. 4.0 was to welcome in digital, the digital revolution. 4.0 is the one to read if, for companies that denied there was gonna be any importance to digital. They just kept, they were making money and they didn't need digital. So we, in 4.0, argue the case that get into digital as fast as you can. So what are we doing in 5.0? We're arguing that there are new tools created in the, during the digital revolution that you need to know because they will help you perform better. What are the tools? Do you know anything about 3D printing? Uh, is it possible that your company should um, use a drone to deliver the product? Yeah, but we do know that um, Amazon uh, has talked about uh, dropping off the product uh, from its own, uh, a drone that even phones you that the product is now on your doorsteps. Stuff like that. Uh, what about um, virtual reality? What about what we call chat bots? Um, what about uh, facial recognition? Can you use that? Uh, what about voice recognition? Do you have a, uh, a Siri? You know, when I get on my cell phone, I ask Siri, what's the time? What, what, what's the weather like tomorrow? And so on and so forth. Voice and facial recognition. I can list a lot of these. So Marketing 5.0, which is really subtitle, uh, it's titled Marketing Technology for Humanity, um, takes you on a journey through the new technologies that uh, will make a big importance. And also we make comments on three gaps. One is the generation gap, the generation gap. The, we, we have seen companies where the CEO has committed to sit down with a younger member of the company who grew up with digital 
and take a lesson, an hour lesson, three times a week, the CEO being taught by the younger employee to understand the digital world and what this company can do. So there's a generation gap. And it's a gap in another sense. The new generation is not, looks at choosing a company to work for with different wishes than the workers in the past. The workers in the past were happy to join a company that would pay well, as well as they could get paid. But today's uh, younger generation wants to choose a company that first of all shows that it cares in some way about the state of the world. Uh, it's, it's one that they could feel good about. They're, they could be feel good about telling others, yes, I work for company X because we, we want to make the world a better place. Secondly, when they join a company, they want a good balance between work and family. They, they, they will work hard, but they also want a good play life too and then family life. And so, in, and since our future is made by young people, we have to compete for them and get the best young people to work for us. And we have to, through our branding and our values, making our values apparent to any students about what we care about as a company. And that's looked at also in the uh, 5.0 book. Well, let me move forward. Published uh, this book just recently, and we make a, a number of points about that, and we call it H to H marketing, and the H stands for human. Finally, you're not a consumer, you're not a producer. Actually, you're both. You know, a lot of uh, consumers are producers. They have blogs, they produce content, they run businesses. Uh, and, and many producers are consumers. Uh, let's say they're, these are human beings working with each other and we should respect them and respect others and so on. So we're making that point, uh, the genesis of human to human marketing. But the book also gets into three new areas that uh, one is design, the importance of design thinking to marketers. We know that. So in fact, designers would say, what is marketing if not really the, 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 the process of designing uh, systems to deliver products of a good kind to the right people. Uh, but design um, is, is so important, especially if you are into innovation, uh, design is very important to thinking through uh, your new products. By the way, one of the best way to test any new product idea is to go with virtual reality. Make a, uh, a virtual, take the product you're trying to design that's already under your computer, but don't produce it. Put uh, the, the, sub, the target market people through putting glasses on and they will experience, let's say you've designed, you, you, you designed a new car, an electric car. You can give the customer an experience of opening the door, sitting in the car and driving the car with all with whatever sounds come out and so on without ever producing a car. For, that's called augmented reality. You create a version of the product that the customer can experience and then say, I'm interested in it or I'm not interested in it and so on. Okay. Besides design, and uh, we also talk a lot about most products are really about services. It's, there's a service logic. And we got that years ago when um, Ted Libet of Harvard, the distinguished professor, said that uh, you, you want a hole, you don't want a, a drill. Yes, you buy a drill because a drill helps you make a hole. So the service is the creation of a hole. And we got to remember that with every product. What is the purpose of the product? And there's a wonderful thing written about why do people driving to work normally, uh, they, they didn't have their breakfast, they get in the car and they stop at a place where they get a milkshake, not a coffee. 
the trouble with a coffee is you're driving for another half hour or hour and the coffee is going to very quickly. A lot of people want something to do while they're driving and a milkshake is thick. It takes a long time and you enjoy it all the time. And, and then you're at work finally. So you see, we ask, what's the purpose of our product? Uh, what, it's, what service is created basically? So the book goes into that too and a couple of other things. Let me move on. Everyone has to understand social media. Uh, this is our fourth edition now of a very, very popular book that we wrote on social media marketing. So it not only explains Facebook and how to use it for advertising and, and how to use Google and Instagram and all these, it is full of examples of companies in Europe, in the United States and elsewhere, and what they did with these things. Now, one cute story I will mention is uh, Procter & Gamble, our may, one of our major companies, um, and uh, under the great CEO, A.G. Lathley, said, we've got to get into uh, social media. And he said, I'm going to take money uh, away from our TV advertising. I'm not going to stop TV advertising. And I'm not going to stop print advertising, but I'm going to use, uh, give them less money and, and use this to crash into the digital revolution and see how, we, how it will work for us. And sure enough, they found out what works and what doesn't. And they found out, they realized they overspent on the new media, the social media, but it's necessary to overspend in order to learn what is working for you. And then they reduce their budget for social media to its right size. And they said, the two work together. We never give up traditional because traditional and digital work together. It's like your TV 30 second ad mentions for more information, go to www. In other words, there's an interplay between digital and uh, traditional. And we uh, bring people into this kind of thinking through this book. Behind all of this is the question of what is the common good? What, why are we in business? Why, what, what is the common, how is the common good uh, ex affected by government actions and legislation, by nonprofits, by business firms? And, when there's a big issue, let me give you an example. An issue coming up in the United States is, it's not yet prominent, but it's been mentioned, is a wealth tax. Is a wealth tax a good thing to pass or not? I, mean, I happen to be in favor of it, and it will hit me too, and it will hit a lot of people. But the problem is that you can't have a growing economy if more, most of the money is going to the rich. And not to, and and that you set you have so many poor people, you have so many professional people who were part of the middle class, and now they can't, they feel poor because they can't afford to send their kids to college in the United States. And if there was a surgery needed of fifty thousand or a hundred thousand dollars, they may not be covered and go bankrupt. So What's the common good? The common good is to have a little more equality, not equal everyone, but we have to tax the rich. We do. And the rich knows that and they do it. Bill Gates and Warren Buffett oh, oh, created, please look it up on the internet. The, it's called the, um, the giving pledge, the giving pledge, a hundred, uh, 250, 11 uh, billionaires have promised to give away half their wealth within 10 years to good causes by signing up. And they explain where, where they're giving it, to colleges, to religious organizations, to uh, popular, you know, to the American Cancer Society, the health, things like that. So there are billionaires who are actually begging to be taxed higher, but that's not the common 
uh, position. You know, Jeff Bezos, he wants to fly us to Mars. Uh, and that's how he wants to use his money. Uh, okay, the point is what's for the common good? And this basic idea came about in Jeremy Bentham in 1780s. He said, look at the issue. Ask how many people would be happy voting for it and how many people will be unhappy. And if the number of people who would be made happy with that decision exceeds the number of people who would make unhappy, be unhappy, it is a good thing for the common good. That's, it's as simple as that. Well, frankly, if you pass a wealth tax, there will be a lot of, some unhappy people, but most people will be happy if the money is used for better education and better health and so on. So uh, you can go into the common good book that I wrote about issues like that. And finally, one of the biggest sectors in the economy is healthcare. And I've been writing about that. And this is our second edition of a book we started in 2017 uh, to talk about not just hospitals, not just doctors, we talk about pharmaceutical firms. We talk about insurance ideas. Everything that gets involved in delivering services and products needed for a, a healthy society. Uh, as a matter of fact, as an aside, I hope you all know that we have measures now of, the, of which countries are the happiest, of which com countries are have the highest well-being, health, health. Well, I'm not proud of the U.S. We're number 19 in happiness and number 16 in health and, and well-being. I am very impressed with the Nordic countries, Finland, Denmark, Sweden, Iceland, uh, Finland, uh, you know this group because they're in the top 10. All of the five Nordic countries are in the top 10 on happiness and health. Add Canada, by the way, our neighbor doing better than us. And the question is, we want to ask, what is it all about? It's all about, you know, in marketing, we have a new motto, we say, Better marketing leading to a better world. The, the, the letters are BM, better marketing, and BW. BM, BW. Uh, better marketing, do better marketing to create a better world. And a better world is defined as a world where happiness and health prevail. Societies like that. I know it's hard to talk about the reality We've gone through COVID. We're not through it at all. India, terrible situation. A country that I am so close to in so many ways. I've been to Bangalore uh, and, other, and, and several other cities. In fact, I was in India in 1956 for a whole year. So I, I'm, I'm, in the, I'm partly Indian in that sense. And uh, I'm very uh, saddened by uh, the uh, COVID uh, impact there and and yet all of us are also thinking about what's po what's post covid going to be like when we get there it will be a new normal it won't be the old normal so much has changed people a lot of people do their work for companies but at home i think they're going to prefer to stay at home than to go back to the to offices full time they they will work full time but not in offices all kinds of things will be different. So I'm gonna conclude by saying, these seven books that I wrote open up seven different vistas and strategic views. And I wanted to share that with you. And I wanna thank uh, Rohit particularly uh, for guiding me uh, to make this talk and publicizing the talk so that we have a lot of listeners. Thank you very much. To all of you, best wishes for India and everyone.
Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Khotla. Well, there are, there are um, if I can say this, uh, there's an ocean full of questions lined up for you. But one question that will make a lot of difference to all the listeners today uh, would be uh, uh, this one. And this question um, uh, is being asked by one of the professors. And the question is, what is your advice to all the professors out there who are teaching marketing? How can, how can they enhance uh, the learning that they deliver in the classroom for their students? Well, I would say my, my style of teaching is very project oriented. It's not standing in front of a class and lecturing. Uh, though I like to do that and, and sometimes uh, it's done well. But I, I want the class, I immediately say to the class, uh, find a company, look at that company, contact them because you're interested in that company. You want to learn how they're doing their marketing and you want to presume that you might even find ideas that would help them do it better, but do it on a team basis. Form a team with three, uh, three or four uh, other students and really make a report, but one that means you've gone and talked not only to the company people, but to the customers that this company has and the employees that this company ha uh, has. And uh, if I have uh, several presentations like that in the class, and I've always done it this way, each the students listening to what other companies were like and, and, and what was found out about them, uh, it's quite a learning experience. So I want an, an, a class that is actively doing something and not just listening to what is marketing. Thanks, Great. Rose. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we have another question from our participant. Uh, I'm going to club both the participants' questions. We have it from Trupti Dandekar, Humnekar, and Dushyan Singh Adhikari. During the uncertain time of the pandemic, what kind of marketing mix modifications do we see forward mixed with Dushyan's? What are the new strategies that's going to come now that since everybody is stuck in four walls? And uh, what are the new things that's evolving since the pandemic? Yes, that's a very powerful question. Um that may, it requires us to be futurists. Uh, futurists are people who can look ahead and imagine new things. Uh, I might even add that I'm a member of a group called the Fork in the Road group because uh, the famous uh, futurist named uh, Buckminster Fuller said that there's always a fork in the road. If we go, go one way, there will be he said, um, happiness. If we go the other way, there will be extinction of the human race. So he was very serious about making a choice between two big forks in the road. It's never that serious, although with climate change now, yes, the planet is in danger too, if we keep our, the old fuels and, and the pollution. So, and if the world heats up, so we, we always have forks in the road. And um, so an answer to the, the, the question is, what, what new strategies, what are, what would be, uh, what is new that we have to think about a lot? And I think that the, the, the biggest idea is called purpose thinking. What is the purpose of our company? Don't get away with the shorthand where you say profits. Purpose is profits. No. Uh, uh, let's take Unilever as an illustration of an answer to your excellent question, uh, Rahu. Namely, do you know that Mr. Um, Paul Pullman, the, CE, the former CEO, he made sure that every brand defines its purpose. The brand which, and the purpose cannot be to make profit. So one of their brands is, is Dove. Another is Axe. Uh, they have so many brands. So every brand has a purpose, but also each of his divisions has a purpose. He has a food division. So the purpose isn't food. The purpose is healthy food. And they know some of their foods are not quite that healthy. 
and they're going to move it with the purpose being healthy food. And he has a cleanliness section. And the purpose is a, a cleaner world. Uh, it's not just cleaning casually. Uh, it, so I would say that the, the new idea is that companies should do a better job of figuring out not a single purpose. As a matter of fact, to, I judge companies by three criteria. One is a company profitable for good reasons. Two is the company showing a caring for sustainability. Namely, they care about the climate ch change problem and, and so on. And they want to think of this, the next generation. Their, their sustainability is to want our, our children and grandchildren to do well too. And the third is, does the company care about any of our social problems, our homeless people, our hungry people? Uh, so Unilever cares about all three, making profits, being sustainable, and having a dent to make the world a better place with fewer problems. That's uh, my answer to where we should be doing our thinking. Thank you. Sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, one interesting question up here is that uh, India as a country sees a lot of uh, uh, traditional business house setups. And apart from going digital, uh, what are the other kind of growth strategies that the traditional businesses can now look at with the, uh, with the pandemic in place? Apart from going digital, what is it that yeah. you can suggest? Yes. Um, I wrote a book with my brother, Milton Kotler, called, um, it's sort of eight ways to grow. Can't even remember the exact uh, title we put on it. But the main thing is, uh, sure, uh, I favor organic growth, basically, because you're into some business, you understand customers and competitors and so on. And uh, you can imagine, and you have certain technologies that you command and, and you, you try to grow and make new things that meet unsatisfied needs. Okay, but you can grow, also grow by buying another company or two. Um, that is some, it's worked well for some companies. They've grown through acquisitions and mergers. Uh, but 50% uh, of them fail and don't, and don't meet their goals. So it's, you have to be very careful uh, in buying another company. You, you usually ruin the, the company you bought but by, not, by take, telling them to conform to the way you run the big company when in fact they made their money by doing it differently. Another way uh, to grow uh, uh, that comes up frequently is um, to do more with, uh, with, with government. It may well be, you know, there's a lot of uh, things that government has to do. And I like the idea of public private work too, uh, because then you, you're combining a lot of money with a lot of uh, aspiration and the two might work together. So basically I, I would just say, look for my book on, uh, on uh, several ways to grow your business because I have eight ways and there are eight chapters. And I talk about the, the ways you make mistakes with each of those ways the way, and the companies that have actually been successful with those, each way. Sure, thank you so much. We have another interesting question. I'm going to club three uh, people's question. One is Kundan, other one is Rakshit and Rahul Shetty. So the combined question is young generation. India is known to be the hub for startups and Bangalore has many startups which has reached a billion dollar valuation as well. With the pandemic that has come in, where should students focus and prepare in the space of marketing? And a professor has also asked, how can we prepare ourselves to ensure that students are taught everything with marketing keeping in consideration how the world has changed in the last 12 to 14 months with the pandemic? Boy, uh, being a, a student today and making choices is a very difficult thing because the future is uh, turbulent, uh, risky, uncertain, and we don't know its full shape 
in the future. Um, I think I think students uh, have to follow what their natural abilities are and natural interest. I've always, uh, uh, I wouldn't like to see students going into areas because they look good, but they have no caring for that, no, and no, no, no skills for that type of business. Um, I think students should be uh, using uh, the, the internet to get to know many other people who might think along similar lines. Uh, do you know that thing called Clubhouse? Clubhouse is a, a system where you can form a club about any anything that you're interested in. This is how, by the way, a lot of the startups start. Not with Clubhouse necessarily, but uh, they could have started with a, a discussion of some problem. And in India, uh, look, uh, there, there's, a, there's so much, even if you want to be an educator, there's so much to build into the educational system in India that might help people maneuver better through the choices that they, they face later on. You have to ask, are you supplying the education in your big cities that is equipping the students with the best chances of making a contribution to the society? And probably, you know, you're teaching the way you've always taught. We all do that. But is it project oriented or is it just classroom listening uh, and so on? And do we have to teach uh, certain subjects? Uh, and what are the subjects that are missing from our curriculum that ought to be uh, available? There's, there's a lot of um, your question is a very rich one and I really can't answer it easily. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, we'll, we'll probably take uh, two more questions due to brevity of time. Uh, one question coming in over here is uh, the purpose of marketing uh, in today's time. Some, some people kind of regard this as an act to make profits, while some regard this as an act to sustain a product. So what, is, what are your views on this? Um. Let me even tell you something more fundamental. There's a big movement now, but not that big, called anti-consumerism. You'll see more come up shortly that a lot of people, and it affects your view of marketing, because marketing is, uh, is a, um, a manifesto that is very important to be a consumer and to consume a lot and to be materialistic, to value products and, and things and collect them and, 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 and put into your home lots of things you, you bought and so on and so forth, a good car or this. Uh, so we got to uh, recognize that as, as we um, marketers work to get people to meet needs, real or created needs uh, that they that we are marketing materialism basically and some people want a different lifestyle I even wrote about four different lifestyle groups including the one who wants to simplify his life want fewer things uh, wants to uh, avoid things that are going to cause cause carbon in the atmosphere Stop, use, stop using plastics, uh, make sure you're a good citizen and not polluting and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of uh, questions about uh, marketing's purpose. Uh, uh, well, we marketers make it simpler. Our purpose is to find customers, keep customers and grow customers. It's, that's the mantra find, keep, and grow. And the more that the customer buys of different things, that's called economic growth. And doesn't every society want economic growth? Because that's how you get more jobs. And we need to create more jobs for people to have uh, meaningful work lives. By the way, 
terrible problem, namely automation and AI. Those two are killers of jobs. Automation will do routine, will, will take over routine jobs. And that means no jobs for unskilled people if, if we automate. And then AI will probably take over managers' jobs and, and professionals' jobs of lawyers and, and accountants and so on. So the big ultimate problem is how do you have a society with enough jobs? Uh, because actually the role of marketing has been job creation. You understand that? That marketing's role is yes, to sell products, but if they sell, there's, the jobs continue. If you fail to sell well, you've reduced the number of jobs. So marketing's important. Its importance is very real now. Ultimately, we will have to face new horizons and, and dangers and, and think about them too. So I didn't ask your, answer your question directly about, about uh, the specific uh, thing about finding and how, and how to keep customers and how to how to grow your customers, but uh, the marketing's role has been very important in history, uh, but now we want to be sure we, we're running marketing in a beneficial way for everyone. Yes. Sure. I'm going to take, a, take another question or two. Uh, uh, so here's a question from a gentleman from the industry, Himanshu Swami. Uh, his question is, uh, he comes from a marketing agency. So he says, will these go away as companies are building in-house marketing teams and not outsourcing the same? So when, uh, so what is the state of the most important thread in the marketing industry, which are the agencies? Uh, where do they need to pull their socks up or what do they need to be prepared with for a better standing future, uh, gaining more customers, maintaining and growing, like you said? Yes. Uh, we, we have spotted that trend of uh, in-house marketing, and there's some advantages and, uh, and some disadvantages. Um, the, the, the advantage is that it's very hard to get a, an outside firm to understand your business so well. Uh, certainly hard for them to understand it better than you do. And in-house marketing... Um, has the, has the benefit of probably a little more precision, but you know, it lacks the experience and the insights that these outside agencies have put together with uh, answering the marketing needs of so many other types of companies. Um, I, I can imagine a case where a company decides at some point, it's time that we run our own marketing and it will, will reduce our costs and, and it will be more, more, the argument is it will be more effective. And then after a while, they're gonna be disconnected with a lot that's going on and someone's gonna make the case inside the company that it's time that, hey, I heard of that agency that has done miracles for our competitor. And I think we ought to find another outside agency and get some help. So I think it's gonna go back and forth. Uh, it's not a massive thing that, it, you know, the in, 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 in um, doing the marketing inside the firm is, is usually some very large companies that um, never got to feel they got that much value back from the outside agencies. And at that time, they decide to go that way. I don't think it's a problem. I think most, most companies are small and medium size and they, they, they need the experience in fact, the outside agency is the marketing department, basically. In some cases, for a small business, that outside agency has so much good experience, they, they are the marketing force for the company. So it will go back and forth. Do we have more questions, Professor Rohit, from you? A last one, maybe? Uh, I think uh, uh, we are done. So I think we should... Uh... Okay. <laughs> okay. So your Dr. questions Kenneth are wonderful. It makes yeah. I end up enjoying these sessions because uh, I meet it, very interesting people, and I get to think. I go back, sit down on a on my uh, my 
my uh, chair and I uh, start thinking about what I, what I poorly answered and what could be a better answer. Thank you so much for inviting me. Sure. Pleasure and uh, joy. And I, wish the, I, I wish the best for, for India and its, uh, its uh, fight to get COVID under control. And to, again, you know, I used to say in many of my talks in India, and I have always enjoyed going to India, I would say, you know what? You're a sleeping tiger and you got, it's time you wake up. Well, you, you've woken up. The, the energy started and then COVID came along because you were on your way. So things will look better when you finally get COVID under control. Right. Best wishes to everyone. So we, we, we request a few more minutes of you, Dr. Philip Kotler. We have a little surprise for you. Before that, I would request our honorable chairman of AMC Institutions, Bangalore, to give the closing remarks. I, uh, and we have a little surprise for you. We are really excited. So could we please request uh, uh, our honorable chairman, Sri Dr. Parma Hamsa. Good evening. Yes. Good evening. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Nice Good to evening. see you. It's a great experience to be benefited because of the American and the the management concepts. And most of us, including us, we are all have started in the US and we have a great experience. We have learned and we have tried to implement in this country. And more importantly, I should thank you for your very lucid, clear pronunciation. Thank you. <laughs> Wherein all, all the people here, because I, well, while doing the doctorate program in the California, I used to have a professor from Japan, uh, and it's very different pronunciation. And you made it very clear. All of us have understood what you spoke very clearly. That's the first thing I just wanted to thank you for this one. And we run a, basically a management institution is an institution called Administrative Management College in Bangalore. So one of the, the first and premier institutions started in the private sector. And having learned many things from the California, I started implementing in the country, especially the Bangalore. It is a really great success. We have today more than 1,500 management students with us. I'm really thankful uh, for the, this one. And there won't be any person without reading Philip Kotler's book. Anyone, even now, now more than 50 years now, you are in the market. I think the highest, uh, the selling, uh, the price you have, and the number of copies we we have the highest number of uh, the textbooks in our libraries. So we are really uh, thankful for you, because of you, there are many academicians have become authors. There is your your uh, the the books, the way you. Sorry, I think you got cut off. Yeah, I think uh, we are losing. Let me just quickly check. It was so useful to the academicians, especially to basic. Thank you. Okay. So we are we are very happy to you. But all our institutions in Bangalore. Uh, we wish and uh, made a, a small video. Yeah. We have a small little uh, video made for uh, you, which I would request were, Professor Rohit. Oh, how nice. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, to all the participants, uh, we, we lost, we lost uh, our uh, honorable chairman between some technical glitch. Uh, he wanted to convey to uh, Dr. Philip Kotler and to all of you that uh, on May 27th, Dr. Philip Kotler turns 90. And this is one 
one kind gesture that we'd like to present before you all uh, to mark his upcoming birthday. So, sir, please do uh, accept this from us. This is specially made just for you. Here Thank you be. so much. Here it Are you going, going to show it now? Yes. Oh. So wishing you a very, very, very happy birthday, Dr. Kotler. Thank you so much. What a pleasant surprise, a, a, a surprise. and please send a copy to me. Sure. Uh, my wife uh, will very much and my family will enjoy uh, your, your initiative. It, it was very thoughtful. Thank you. Thank you. Wishing Thank you 90 you. more. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for, for all of us. For all of us. And now I request our Vice President of AMC Group of Institutions, Ms. Monica Kaluri, to please give the vote of thanks, followed by which we will uh, thank all of, our, all of the participants will thank Dr. Kotler and there will be a few important announcements. Uh, Madam Monica, over to you. Hello. Am I audible? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Firstly, I would like to wish Dr. Philip Kotler a very happy birthday in advance. On behalf of the City Group of Institutions, Bangalore, and the entire team, dear gratitude to our guest of honor, Dr. Philip Kotler, for his valuable presence. Thank you for bringing out the seven views of how marketing and businesses are evolving. You're truly humbled and honored, sir, to have heard you live. Special thanks to Dr. K. R. Paramahamsa, Chairman, AMC City Group of Institutions, for his constant support and guidance. Rahul Kaluri, Executive Vice President, AMC City Group, Bangalore. Professor Rahul Parmar, Dean AMC, and Professor Rohit Tamurthy, a special thanks to you, Associate Dean AMC, for making this happen. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. And once again, Dr. Philip Kotler, you have no idea how much your acceptance means to all of us. Thank you so much for making this dream come true not just for us, but for the other 20,000 people watching us from across the globe. Thank you so much. And once again, a very, very happy birthday to you in advance. Thank you and keep us all blessed. All of you, please be blessed and with a vision of the world and what would make everyone happier and healthier in this world. Thank you, I'll leave now. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Kortler. Best wishes. Thank you. Rahul, sir, you have any quick announcement? Great. Thank you all participants for being a part of today's webinar by AMC Institutions Bangalore on seven views of how marketing and businesses are evolving. A very important announcement to everybody who's with us on, uh, on the call now. Please subscribe to the YouTube page of AMC and the Instagram. We will have this activity every month. We will have a speaker from around the world who will share his journey, his expertise and wisdom. So you could be a part of it. So requesting you, all of you who are interested, subscribe to the YouTube channel of AMC, subscribe to the Facebook page, and thank you all for taking part. I would like to personally thank Professor Rohit for making this happen. And uh, this was brilliant for all the student community, teaching, and everybody who have joined us. Participants, thank you all. Please be safe and have a good night.
thank you once again and looking forward to hosting you all in our next webinar which is going to be lined up very soon so take care and best wishes to all of you stay safe and stay home